Yeah. Kathy, I have the hardest question of the morning for you. Um, how do you decide in this stage two patient who you're going to watch and wait and who you think should be treated? What are the, when you go in the room saying, I think I'm going to recommend treatment for this patient. I mean, I think it goes back to basically what Dusty mentioned earlier, the high risk uh, mm -hmm. stage two patients. We do have to take that into account as well as the um, number of lymph nodes removed, the surgical technique, uh, multiple factors need to be taken into account and that's how we, I think, all of us individually make the decision as well as with the discussion with the patient. Yeah, and so we talked about stage two being a little different than stage three, probably biologically. Uh, Dustin, another hard question, is rectal yet another kind of cancer? Should we apply the lessons learned um, in colon cancer to rectal cancer, what's your thoughts about that? So, so I think we should think about the data that we're collecting in colon cancer as applying to rectal cancer, but we also have to be very careful with how we apply that to rectal cancer. And, and a big reason for that is the inadequacies of the clinical staging for rectal cancer. And so unfortunately, even when we think we have a stage two rectal cancer, uh, as many as 20% of those patients end up being actually stage three. And the practice there is changing so quickly as well. It's hard to kind of how to, how to apply it. I think it's a really good point. Um, Tony, we spent a bunch of abstracts this year on the duration of adjuvant therapy. Do us a quick summary on three versus six and your opinion, because I think this gives an opportunity for opinion on how to apply this data, on how to do it. So I, I, think, I think that really the, the, the data, so the, so the data that was, <coughs> excuse me, that was presented at ASCO comes in, in two flavors. The first flavor is one study that just confirms, uh, essentially one, one of the studies that was included in the IDEA trial just confirms the findings mm. from IDEA, uh, which is good. Yeah. Uh, the second one was actually, I think, uh, more interesting. Remind everybody what IDEA showed. So IDEA essentially was a study that looked at uh, two, uh, three versus six months of oxaliplatin-based uh, plus of fluoropenine, so K-Pox or Folfox, in patients with stage three colon cancer primarily, but there was a cohort of stage twos as well, and what it showed essentially, it was a non-inferiority study. What it showed in the big uh, 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 patient population and the large patient population that there, the study did not meet its primary endpoint of non-inferiority or again, uh, you know, as a statistical endpoint, it did not meet it, but clinically, I think it actually challenges us to reconsider how we treat patients in the adjuvant setting. And in fact, we know one of the biggest challenges in adjuvant setting is essentially uh, patients uh, living the rest of their life miserably with neuropathy because they were overexposed to oxaliplatin, which may have been unnecessary for most patients. And so the, 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 the study does at least did confirm uh, that uh, if the IDEA uh, trial, the pooled analysis of close to 12,000 patients suggested that perhaps if you use KPOX, even in the higher risk patients, you may still get away with three months of capecitabine and oxaliplatin. With Folfox, not true. With Folfox, you have to expose uh, patients as much as possible as, as, as tolerated uh, for uh, uh, 12 months. So these are your uh, T4 and 1 plus. Uh, for patients with lower risk, Actually, you can get away with three months of KPOX, and it actually uh, definitely seems not inferior. But again, you're breaking down subgroup analysis, which, which are secondary. Now, the, 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 the studies that were presented at ASCO, the, the Hellenic study, which, is, which was one of the larger ones as well, stage two and stage three colon cancers, did confirm two things, did confirm the findings from IDEA, i.e., again, KPOX may, may be okay for three months, uh, uh, Fall Fox definitely six month. Yeah. Uh, for stage two, interestingly, again in that one study, same findings. The high risk stage two look pretty much like stage three in terms of risk stratification, closer to the to the to the to the higher risk stage three. Then when when they've done a prospective pooled analysis of all the stage two patients that were included actually in four trials, uh, mind you that the study that came from the U.S. was a pure. Uh, stage three study, the 80702, they found, again, very similar findings than, uh, than what they found with the stage three, i.e., the principles that apply to stage three in terms of how we uh, take decisions on three versus six will apply the same to your high-risk stage two patients. What do I do? So at this point of time, I'm still uh, a minimalist in that standpoint. I, I like the three months for my patients. Uh, 
whenever actually I have a discussion with the patients and I understand I have my bias perhaps introduced, I try to have the discussion. With the low risk patients, three months of K-Pox, and I, I'm super comfortable with, this, <clears throat> with the high risk patients, including the high risk stage two. The discussion I have is three months of K-Pox. I'll have a discussion with you at three months about whether we want to continue with capecitabine. I actually do not believe that exposing patients to more than three months of oxaliplatin will add much benefit. Kathy, I, I know you feel very strongly about this too, and you know I, I sort of look at this and say, well, okay, it wasn't non-inferior, but we sort of know by how much it was inferior. It's a huge collection of patients, and even if there's a delta, we now can sort of measure that delta and share that, just like in our stage two patients, sort of share that data and decide. But as Tony says, well, neuropathy can be bad, but as you point out, they are living with neuropathy, right? So instead of dead, right? So, and this is a big deal. And an oncologist feel, I think, very vulnerable in this space because anybody who relapses after adjuvant therapy, we all personally reflect and say, what if I had, right? What if I had given more? Would they have been the one or 2% difference? So give me your take on this data. So the, the recent updates, I think, um, you know, Tony's given a very nice uh, summary of what was discussed. Um, I just want to make sure people do take into account that the Hellenic data was not a randomized study. It was based upon the physician's discretion of whether or not they would receive KPOX or full FOX. And then for the pooled study, for the four trials. Well, the three versus six was, but the which choice, which fluoropyrimidine, right? Right. right. Yeah. And, then, and then for the, um, for the pooled analysis of the four trials, um, also the data, large part of the patients had received KPOX versus the five, if, I'm sorry, versus the full FOX regimen. So the, the data is very interesting. Um, once again, though, it doesn't really take into account what we really do in real life, which is basically we give patients maybe three, maybe four months of oxali, and that's pretty much it. And then we just continue whether it be 5-FU or there's a LOTA.